The word minister in the church and in the government means exactly the same thing. It means servant. We must remember that we as leaders are servants and not masters, and that the people should render unto Caesar only what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Communities are at the most fundamental level, at the foundational level, made up of people. And as leaders, we must keep people at the center of everything we do. We pray that policymakers would be guided by the Christ love principles that strive for true healing. Every single year in Ottawa, elected officials from various federal parties gather together and pray. It's called the National Prayer Breakfast, and the purpose of the National Prayer Breakfast is to unite leaders in our nation's capital in order to pray together, to build relationally, and to seek to walk together in the spirit of Jesus Christ. The event is also an extension of a weekly prayer gathering that happens at Parliament with MPs and senators from various parties participating on regular basis. Canada was actually the first nation in the world to establish a national prayer breakfast with Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson addressing it in its inaugural year in 1964. This year was the 58th year and it took place in Ottawa in late May and the theme was a firm foundation. There were 770 Canadians in attendance including dignitaries and political leaders such as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau himself the Honourable Pierre Polyev and Elizabeth May. This year, there was such a draw to it that the event actually sold out a full month in advance. Well, I had the joy of attending in person along with 29 of our friends and ministry partners, and it was such a delight to participate. And I'm very excited that we received permission from the organizers to bring recorded highlights of the event to you today through this television broadcast. So without any further delay, Segments from Canada's 58th National Prayer Breakfast. Let's get to it. So very, very pleased to be able to welcome so many faith leaders from across our country to our nation's capital. You know, the 58th Annual Prayer Breakfast is one of the longest standing national prayer events in the world. And it is incredible that all of you are here at what we think is one of the largest, if not the largest, that we've ever been able to host in our nation's capital. So thank you all for being a part of that. So it is my honor to welcome dignitaries, ambassadors, members of the Senate and House of Commons, faith leaders, and ladies and gentlemen from across our country and around the world. Thank you, and you may be seated while we watch this quick video to get things started. There appear to be smoke bombs or fireworks from submarine that was detected to neutral. Um, this year along the we see uncertainty, despair, turmoil, and loss everywhere we look. People are lost, broken, and searching for answers. Sometimes searching in all the wrong places to medicate the pain, uncertainty, and insecurity within, leading in part to the addictions epidemic we are now facing. Those in leadership are no different. The weight of responsibility leaders carry, especially in times of uncertainty, can be overwhelming and all-consuming. We all have a breaking point. We all have a point where we just can't take it anymore. So where do leaders turn when the weight of it all is just too much? Where do we go when we are leading while at the same time bleeding and silently hemorrhaging on the inside? Thankfully, we have a safe place we can run to, someone timeless and secure to whom we can turn. 
Our beloved late Queen Elizabeth II spoke of this need of foundational faith in her own life. Although we are capable of great acts of kindness, history teaches us that we sometimes need saving from ourselves. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important there they are, but a savior with the power to forgive. I think most of us have a sense of the spiritual, that recognition of a deeper meaning and purpose in our lives. For me, the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I try to lead my life. We need someone who can shelter us from the storm, someone who can shepherd us when we are shattered and needing direction, someone on whom we can rebuild when our world and lives have fallen apart. Someone who can be our rock when everything around us is shaking. Someone who has stood the test of time, who has never failed. Someone who is faithful, who loves us unconditionally. Someone who will run in when everyone else runs out on us. Someone who will never leave us nor forsake us, but will be with us even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. This friend to us all is Jesus Christ our safe place, our strong tower, our rock of ages, our firm foundation. Welcome to the 58th annual National Prayer Breakfast and Leadership Dinner. I am absolutely thrilled that you have joined us and you have made this, if not the most, close to the very most well-attended National Prayer Breakfast in Canada's history. Thank you so much for being a part of this here today. It is the longest running parliamentary and national prayer breakfast in the world. For 58 years here in Canada, members of parliament, senators, ambassadors, representatives from other countries gather here in the nation's capital to look to a source beyond ourselves and recognize that we all need help and guidance and wisdom that comes from above. Today, we humble ourselves and we ask for his favor and blessing upon everything that is to happen here today and that our hearts would be open to receive what he would share with us. Because as we know, in these times of instability, in these times of uncertainty, we can go to a place that is higher than we are and find help and find shelter. The National Prayer Breakfast is an outgrowth of a weekly prayer gathering that happens every week here on Parliament Hill and we have representatives from all parties, different parties on the Hill that come. It is nonpartisan, and we have good time of discussion, and we have prayer together, we share together, and yes, we've laughed, and sometimes we've even cried together. And it is a wonderful time of ministering to one another on a weekly basis. But at this time, I'm gonna call upon the Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons, Member of Parliament for West Nova, Chris Dontremont. Will you Dear Lord, we humbly stand before you this morning and ask for your benediction over our National Prayer Breakfast. As we get to gather together as brothers and sisters in faith, we set aside our partisanship and we give thanks for the many blessings that we are so fortunate to receive through your love and guidance. I wanna say on behalf of the National Prayer Breakfast Organizing Committee and the Leadership Dinner, how appreciative we are that the Right Honorable Prime Minister has come to the National Prayer Breakfast every year that we've had it since he's been in office. And we thank you, Prime Minister, for doing that, and we appreciate you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. The Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. Merci, Richard, d'avoir organisé ce déjeuner ce matin. Et merci, Chris, pour la bénédiction. Canadians hold dearly the values of love, of peace, of justice. These values are lived every day by us Christians across the country. I see it in the way Christians have welcomed refugees of all different faiths from places like Ukraine and Afghanistan and helped clothe them and find shelter for them. In the ways churches help feed the vulnerable in big cities and rural communities and the care and social programs offered to seniors in the ways we work together to provide childcare 
in communities across the country. You care for your communities, not only in times of crisis like we're seeing with the churches in Nova Scotia taking in wildfire evacuees, but day in and day out. Strong, caring communities are at the core of Canada. Communities are at the most fundamental level, at the foundational level, made up of people. And as leaders, we must keep people at the center of everything we do. Our government dedicates ourselves to that every day. It's why we're working with the Red Cross to help people in communities affected by wildfires in Alberta. It's why we're working so hard to protect our environment and fight the impacts of climate change and keep people safe. With that, I want to share a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, a parable as told by Jesus. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his hand, house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Amen. This time it gives me a great honor to also welcome to the podium today the leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition, the Honorable Pierre Polyev. Would you join me in welcoming Mr. Polyev? Merci beaucoup. Richard, here we are again at an event of faith with politicians at the front of the room. And I've noticed this, maybe the Prime Minister has as well. We go to churches when they have a great anniversary or the retirement of a priest, and always the politicians in the front. So one day I asked the Minister, why do you put the politicians up front? Is it because they're the most important? He said, no, 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 it's because you're the ones who are the most in need of redemption. <laughs> so it is important for us to remain humble, as uh, Richard Bragdon would tell you. The word minister in the church and in the government means exactly the same thing. It means servant. We must remember that we as leaders are servants and not masters. It is that servant leadership that is taught to us that we are not kings to rule over the people and that the people should render unto Caesar only what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. Richard has and his team have set, set up this breakfast around the theme of a firm foundation. And boy, do we ever need a firm foundation these days. Everything feels broken. We see this in the heartbroken faces of our young people, nine and ten of whom believe they will never be able to afford a home. No home, no family, no kids. We see this in the raging crime and chaos, drugs and disorder that rage across our streets. We see this in the hopelessness of people cutting back on meals, going hungry because they cannot afford to feed themselves. In these times, now more than ever, we need the solid foundation of the ages, the timeless principles that have secured the prosperity and the happiness of people over the generations. And that is the foundation on which we need to build our future. It is the foundation of Christianity, the Judeo-Christian tradition rooted in the Ten Commandments and the Gospels of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are not old or new ideas. They are timeless ideas, and they are the ones on which we build the future. It reminds me of the, the song, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me, O Lord. Or the Psalm 61, hear my cry, O Lord, listen to my prayer, 
From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint to lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever, and I take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. That heritage is our foundation and our faith in Jesus Christ and the amazing grace that he provides is what will take us forward. It was grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. Thank you. We believe in giving back and doing all that we can do to build a better future. What that means is that when you partner with Faith Team TV, you are partnering with so much more than an issues commentary show. You are partnering with a team that is constantly pouring out to serve Canadians and pray for them and their loved ones through special TV programming and our phone lines as well. You are partnering with at-risk youth through the children that we sponsor every single month and programs we actively partner with like the World Embrace Champions Centre and Children's Park in Gulu, Uganda. You are partnering with national prayer events where we gather believers from sea to sea in united prayer for Canada. You're partnering with the Life Room, which has already mobilized thousands of hours of prayer for the unborn in our nation, and with the Justice Wall, which mobilizes prayer for issues such as human trafficking, youth suicide, conscience and faith freedom, and for good government in Canada. When you stand with us, you're standing with every ministry that we actively sow into through our tithe. One person is a voice, but together we are a powerful force that can do so much good. Thank you for your support of Faith Teen TV and thank you for being a part of this team. Together we truly can lead the world better for the sake of future generations. We appreciate you and every gift really makes a difference. We're honored to have the Honorable John McKay come and share a prayer for Canada at this time. In an era of rising global tensions, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In an era of no mercy, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. In an era of senseless killing, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. In an era of widespread mental illness, blessed are those poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In an era of rampant religious intolerance, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. In an era where institutions and people in authority are disrespected, we ask for your blessings upon our political leadership, upon our judicial leadership, and upon our military and veteran leadership, and all of those who are in authority over us. Amen. I'm glad to be here as a representative of the New Democratic Party to bring greetings this morning. As you've heard a little bit here at the podium this morning, we're living in a time of great challenge, and challenge often provokes various kinds of conflict. And I would say we're certainly living in a time where we hear a lot of divisive rhetoric. And the Christian tradition is no stranger to conflict and has handled that in different ways over the course of centuries now. We've seen Christians fight among each other and war and, and various kinds of very serious conflict. But we also have a strong ecumenical tradition that's in evidence here today, and even more so a strong tradition of reaching out across uh, faith lines and interfaith dialogue, trying to find common ground. Those are two very different ways that our tradition has chosen to handle conflict over the centuries. 
And I think the latter approach, the one of ecumenical and interfaith dialogue, is the one that is most rooted in the lessons of love and humility that Jesus taught. And so I would beseech all of us in this time of conflict and division and challenge to remember those lessons of love and humility and to seek to live out the model of that important dialogue across traditions that allows us to affirm our principles and be strong in our faith, but still love our neighbor and to seek to live peacefully with them. From Isaiah chapter 58, verses 8 to 12. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go to you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help. He will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You, be, you will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of sheets with dwellings. Streets with dwellings, pardon me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Elizabeth May, as she comes, mem member of parliament from beautiful British Columbia. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people who are also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. The member of parliament for Halderman Norfolk, Dr. Leslin Lewis is now coming to offer up a prayer for the less fortunate. And we come before you today to lift up those among us who are persecuted, marginalized, addicted, lonely, and vulnerable. We thank you for your loving kindness in sending your son, Jesus Christ, and the redemption and restoration that is found in the finished work of his death and resurrection. We honor you, Father God, as the one who is above all things and in all things, with the authority to heal the brokenhearted and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. We pray for the persecuted across the globe. Would those persecuted for their faith have the courage to continue to stand for what is right? And would you cover them with your mighty protective hands? God, we pray that the persecuted and the marginalized will come to know peace and walk in joy in spite of the raging storms around them. For those struggling with the disease of addiction, Lord, we pray for the fulfillment of their needs. We pray that policymakers here on earth and in Canada would be guided by the Christ love principles that strive for true healing, deliverance, and restoration for all those who suffer from addiction. For those walking in loneliness, we pray that your deep love for them would abound and bring healing in their hearts. We pray also for the provision of community for the lonely. God, we pray for our parliament, for our staff, for the members of parliament, for all opposition leaders, 
and for our Prime Minister. That you would awaken our hearts to the role that we play in supporting the persecuted, marginalized, addicted, lonely, and vulnerable. We ask that you remind our hearts to be compassionate towards those suffering around us. May we be reminded of your word in Matthew 25 and 7, that whatever we do unto the least of these, the orphan, the poor, the widowed, and unto you, Lord, we do these things. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray for those among us living in brokenness. We pray, Lord, that you will draw near to them, heal and restore them. We pray over them, number six, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be glorious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for these special highlight clips from Canada's 58th National Prayer Breakfast event. Let's continue to keep our leaders in prayer. They have a challenging job and need all the spiritual support that we can give them. And hey, if you were blessed to learn about this event, maybe take a moment and email or call the organizer, Member of Parliament Richard Bragdon, to thank him and his amazing team for all of their hard work in pulling the event together. If you appreciated getting to watch these highlights, if you want to watch them again, or perhaps share them with your loved ones, simply go to our website, faithteen.tv, where you'll find this program, as well as other previous episodes for your viewing ease. If you want to continue to see shows like today's on air, we would so appreciate your support so that we can keep at it. We say it every week, but it's worth mentioning again. As a nonprofit TV show, we are able to stay on air, airing shows like today's because of the generous gifts of our monthly partners and our regular donors. You are the ones that make all of this happens. So if you'd like to become a monthly partner, maybe increase your monthly donation or give a special gift today, we would be so grateful. Simply visit faithteen.tv to give securely online or call our team at 1-866-844-0844 and someone will be waiting there and honored to take your call and even pray for you and your personal prayer needs. Lastly, don't forget that we have a few ways that you can assure that you never miss a show. Sign up for our email list at faithteen.tv or download that smartphone app. When when you do either of those, you will be notified every single time that a new show is released so that you never miss a single episode. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you next week. Until then, take care and God bless you.